This is Action Sports Jack's First and Ten Training Camp. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. Whoever can contribute to winning is who's going to get the opportunities is kind of the biggest way to say that. Whether that's 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, I think that's really a case-by-case, game-by-game basis. Put me in, Coach. The Jags have options on offense in the receiving game and in the running game. Might be more pressure on the coaching staff really to find the right guy the football, especially when he's got the hot hand. We get to see that offense on display in a couple of days. Welcome to the first and 10 training camp. I'm Brent Martin of the Jags and Dallas Cowboys on Saturday, 5 o'clock on CBS 47. We'll be there. It's been fun to watch the passing game on the practice field. Now we get to see a glimpse of the real deal in a game. This morning, the Jags had one more light workout for the week. Friday is a travel day. Saturday, it's the game. Practice is important for plenty of players. They got coaches and fans attention. But as Allen Iverson would say, we're talking about practice. How will these guys do under the lights is where the roster spots are won and playing time is earned. You want to see just clean operation that everybody understands the excitement. It's not some exotic game plan with a lot going on. It's core stuff that these guys know really well. So we, we anticipate uh, them being clean with their operation and execution. And that, that's really what you want to see. Uh, keep an eye on the depth at receiver on Saturday. Some really good competition there, maybe just for one spot. The most talked about criticism of the Jags this offseason, and even in camp, the pass rush. Will it be better? Can it be better with the personnel the Jags have? Jacksonville had 35 sacks last season. That was 25th in the league. You know, if they got to 44 sacks, that would have been top 10. So the gap isn't big, but you still got to get to the quarterback. Enter Trayvon Walker, year two, more polished hungrier and maybe a more defined role. He had three and a half sacks last season. The expectation is more production after being picked number one overall a season ago. Uh, it's a lot more easier now. Like I said, I'm not really stressing about work, learning the plays. Like I, I know the plays. Basically, I'm just taking it, like I keep saying, I'm taking it to a new level. So especially like algebra to pre-cal, you know what I'm saying, just add on to my game at this point. I know the scheme. Uh, I know things that I need complimenting it to my game now. Algebra and pre-cal. I thought football was easier than that. Go look up Chris Jones' career arc. Maybe Trayvon will follow him. Multiple positions for Chris. Two sacks his first season. Six and a half his third. And now one of the most dominant players in the game. We would take that. Campbell returns to the activities. That's Tyson Campbell. He's still in the protocol, but obviously getting closer. Yasir Abdullah, the rookie, added to the injury report with concussion as well. So he joined uh, Tyson Campbell and Samus Reyes, the tight end. Rookie Christian Braswell has been running off to the side most of the time the last couple of weeks, but he participated in team drills. The most tenured Jags player... Lineman Tyler Shatley, he won't play on Saturday. He went to AFib a couple of weeks ago, and the Jacks are going to take things slow. Action Sports Jacks' Marcel Robinson catching up with Tyler today. I mean, I've noticed it before. This isn't like a new thing. Uh, my heart kind of flutters sometimes, and honestly, just in the past, I'd ignore it. Uh, and then the other day, I just, for whatever reason, man, I was sitting, in the lunch, I was sitting at lunch, and I, was, I had a little extra time, and I just... I think it's the good Lord looking after me, man. I just felt like I need to go check this checked out. It was fluttering a little bit, so we can check it out. Uh, they ran an EKG real quick, and then they found out I was an AFib. Fast forward, I supposed to, took some medicine. I was supposed to put it back in, didn't do it, so I had to get shocked. And then because of that, I've been on the blood thinners, you know, so uh, just to prevent any like risk of uh, clots and uh, anything worse. Uh, so it's, it's been definitely been a challenge. This is a you know, kind of new territory. You talked about it, you know, having that time obviously off to the side, sort of working out and and uh, and then watching the guys and everything like that, you know, from a mental standpoint, like what's going through your, your mind there, obviously, you know, sitting out there, you know, one of the things is, you know, this is kind of one of those situations where, you know, it, it may kind of like, you know, shift some perspectives around for you or anything like that. Yeah, I'd say the biggest perspective for me, like shift for me was, you know, I went home that night and I was talking to my like wife and kids. And I was like, that was a big perspective shift for me. I was like, what in the world am I doing? Like, this is, this is serious. This isn't like my foot or my knee or something. Like this is my heart. Like holy cow, man! Like what's important is being here for to raise my kids and you know being fully healthy for them. And also gave me a perspective on out here of like just appreciating every every moment, every practice. Because I mean, as scary as it is to say, and hopefully like you know this is not the case, but like you never know. It could have been my last practice. Last time I ever put pads on, helmet on. It's so easy getting these dog days at camp and just like dang, God, man, like. So ready to move on to the season. It was a good like perspective shift to be like, no, nah, like, I need to enjoy every moment. Like, 
every chance I get to put on a helmet and walk out here, like, I need to enjoy that because you don't know how many more you got. Was there ever any sort of, during that contemplation period, it sounds like, was there ever a thought that, you know, you may, you know, hang them up, like any type of retirement thoughts? Or? Uh, no thoughts of wanting to do that. I mean, man, I'd love to, I'd love to do it till the wheels fall off, you know what I'm saying? And but right now I feel good. Um, doctors seem very encouraged that like what's going on is not uncommon for a lot of people to have. Good now that I know what it is and keep an eye on it. And uh, like I said, just, you know, I'd love to stay and do as long as I can. He is a cool guy and a fantastic story just to have a career as long as he's already had it and one of the most respected players in that Jaguars locker room. Got you covered on Saturday. Countdown to kickoff 430. 5 o'clock we got the game and then post game show at 8 o'clock all on CBS 47. And then don't forget Action Sports Shacks primetime 1030 on Fox 30 and 1130 on CBS 47 from Jacksonville to Dallas. It will be a busy day for the Action Sports Shacks team and we can't wait for it. Some football at UNF. Yeah, I know they don't have a team, but FSU is practicing on campus. We'll have the story coming up next. The Jacks will get back to camp next week. They've actually opened up one of the camp sessions to the fans. Today was supposed to be the last day for the fans. We want to allow some fans in on August the 15th. You're watching Action Sports Jacks. First and 10, Training Camp. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. For the most part, got all the conditions that we we're hoping for. Uh, hot, humid, I like how they work today. Hey, Mike Norvell, you want hot and humid, you're in the right place. It's been pretty hot here in Jacksonville, although it's probably been pretty hot in Tallahassee as well. Mike Norvell and Florida State here in town. Busy football morning around here, in fact. Jags at the new facility and the Florida State Seminoles here in town. Welcome back to First and Ten Training Camp, everybody. I'm Brent Martineau practicing at UNF for a little bit of a getaway for the Knowles. Action Sports Shacks' Marcel Robinson has more on the Seminoles' visit. The Florida State Seminoles have returned to Jacksonville for their annual stop on their fall camp tour. This is one of the things that Mike Norvell likes to do to sort of get the guys acclimated to conditions that they may not be very familiar with back in Tallahassee, but that does not apply to one of the players in the team. Of course, we're talking about Reigns grad Kenton K.J. Kirkland, who Mike Norvell says appears to be as advertised early in camp. Really pleased with KJ. I think he's he's going to be a be a great player here. Um, you know he's smart, he's athletic. You know he's he comes to work every day. We were hopeful that we that, we, that he would be able to come in and, and transition to, to put himself in that position. You know fully expect him to, to help this football team this year. Really, you know coming back, uh, I remember coming across the bridge. It was like it is real now. Is uh, you, you got to get to it. You know you got a statement to make. You got a name to make for yourself. And that's really my mentality coming in. Just make a name for yourself. You know, uh, got to put Jacksonville back on the map, let them know they got a good DB, uh, good athlete, good kid, good young man coming out of the city. KJ goes on to say that these practices have been extremely helpful for him in terms of getting ready for what he's going to face this upcoming season. And the Seminoles are glad that's going to be the case because he and the rest of his team is going to have to be ready because their beginning of their season starts off with a bang against those LSU Tigers. At the University of North Florida, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jacks. Yeah, one of several locals on the roster for Florida State. ESPN 690 is your home for Florida State football. It's also your home for Action Sports Jacks. Brent and friends, 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. daily. In your car on ESPN 690, on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And catch us on the apps and the podcast as well.